Good afternoon. Welcome to IDRC Leaders in Action series. And today I have the privilege of receiving Dr. Peter Piat. Welcome, Peter. Hello, Jean. Thank you. Peter is the director of the London School of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, to say it correctly. He is also this year recipient of the Gernard Global Health Award. Gernard Awards are the most prestigious prize that you can receive in global health. And you are the recipient of this prize for a very interesting career, which started almost in the beginning discovering the Ebola virus. Tell me what was your feeling at that moment? Yeah, I was still in training in uh, virology and microbiology at the Institute of Tropical Medicine in Antwerp in Belgium when we received uh, samples from a uh, dead uh, nun who had uh, been working in what was then called Zaire, now the Democratic Republic of Congo. And out of that sample, we isolated uh, what is now known as the Ebola virus. That in itself is, of course, very exciting for any microbiologist. But um, what was even more exciting for me uh, was that it allowed me to go for the first time to Africa, Africa. to um, the Central Africa, and to find out how this virus was transmitted, which was a really very exciting scientific adventure, but also a discovery of, on the one hand, the extreme poverty, the very hard conditions that people live on, but also the warmth and the creativity and the music of Congo. <laughs> and I loved it. And since then, I was bitten by the Africa virus uh, as much as by, you know, the, the desire to work in development, to do research that would improve health in Africa. And that brought you also to work on HIV AIDS. Yes, a few years later in uh, 1981, AIDS was uh, described in the United States. The dogma was that this was a gay disease, but in Antwerp, uh, we were seeing patients from Central Africa, mm -hmm. Europeans and Africans, who uh, had AIDS, and one third of them were women. So it didn't fit with the fact that this was supposed to be a gay disease. And uh, so I, I went back to, uh, to Africa, again to, to Zaire, and we uncovered a major heterosexual epidemic. And immediately I knew that this would be a catastrophe for Africa, a heterosexual epidemic, and uh, that against the background of poverty, of, uh, you know, rapid urbanization. Taboo. Taboos, you know, um, and also uh, gender issues and so on. And that became my life for uh, many years, uh, particularly when I became um, head of UNAIDS. We founded that. Uh, uh, and Canada was a big uh, supporter, supporter and, uh, to, for the creation of this new UN entity because AIDS was getting out of control. And there my um, goal was to make sure that uh, treatment that saved lives in the West would become accessible also for poor people in poor countries because it was in Africa that you had the majority, majority of, of uh, cases. And uh, that took many years, but in the end it worked. And, you know, we'll make a, a jump in time because our audience, we only have a few minutes with Peter. Let's make a jump in time because we are hearing now that there is a potential for a vaccine for HIV AIDS, maybe remotely. We have a vaccine that has been tested for Ebola yes. epidemic in, in West Africa. Do you think that we're going to resolve the problem with vaccines? Well, first of all, uh, well done, Canada, for having produced this uh, first Ebola Thank vaccine. You and which was tested in Guinea and our school. We are very proud that we were associated with, uh, with, this, with this research. Um, for HIV, we are not there yet. And uh, uh, I think having a vaccine in 10 years is a very optimistic scenario, uh, and I hope it is true. And, and it would help, definitely, to have a vaccine, just as we uh, have saved millions of uh, lives, particularly of children, with, uh, you know, with existing vaccines uh, in the West and, and also in developing countries. However, um, health is more than a medical and biological uh, issue. And uh, whether people and societies are healthy or, or uh, have ill health is determined as much by um, the social context, by poverty, by inequalities, by lack of education, by um, power relations in among the two sexes and so on. Yeah. And so we need to work on all these fronts. And we need, don't in only need a, the classic vaccine, we need also the social sure vaccine. vaccine. And that's what we need, particularly for something like a HIV yeah. infection, um, which is really thriving 
on these inequalities. So it's not only about a vaccine, which is a tool, it's not a cure. Yeah. It's about having every tool and, you know, yes. the cases in order to cure some of these complex yeah, issues. Absolutely. Peter, you have been in a privileged position, whether it was in Antwerp, whether it was in Kinshasa, whether it was in Geneva, whether it's now in London, globally to see at global health evolving over the last 40 years. What is the next big frontier for global health? Where do you see, you know, the research making a difference or the place where we have not been and we should be? Yeah, in terms of research, of course, we need an HIV vaccine. That's the frontier in, uh, you know, and the holy grail, I should say, for, uh, you know, infectious HIV. disease research. However, what we're seeing is the emergence of uh, diseases that we are very familiar with in the West. It is uh, diabetes, it's obesity, it's hypertension, yeah. cardiovascular disease, cancer, chronic mental disease. health, chronic diseases. <laughs> and um, when you take South Africa, for example, at the moment, uh, the rates of obesity in women are at the same incredibly high levels as in American women. And so these countries now have to uh, confront a double burden, the classic infectious diseases, maternal mortality, undernutrition, but also mental health issues, chronic diseases, um, you know, overnutrition and so on. And uh, we need original um, approaches for that. We need to find solutions. And we need particularly prevention, because that's at the beginning. And um, take smoking. In China, smoking, we know, is going to kill millions and millions of people. In Africa, smoking levels are still very low. Let's do everything we can to keep it that way, because that is also something we need to do more, not only treating people who are ill, but also that's prevention. Okay. Prevention. Well, on those words of wisdom, I'm going to thank you on behalf of all our auditor. Peter, congratulations again on your Gernard Prize Award this year. It's well deserved and you will have at IDRC always a very warm welcome. You have many friends over here and I wish you the best in the continuation of your career. It has been a pleasure to have you with us this afternoon. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Jean. Thank yes. you. Thank you, everyone.